Hey there everyone, it's Professor Tomney here. It has been quite some time since I've uploaded to the channel. Uh, been very busy. We made a major move to a different state recently. We've had a second child and I actually left the teaching industry. I am working in the private sector at this point. I'm doing agricultural chemistry research and I am working on my side hustle here on YouTube. So I've actually been creating courses that I'm going to offer for free. Um, and one of the big ones, because it's been one of the most popular videos and highly requested topics, is how to solve unknown structures using spectroscopy. So I have put together a course. I've put together an optional guide that can be purchased to go along with it. Um, but that will all be released. I'm probably going to start releasing the free courses close to June. And I'll also be offering private one-on-one -on -one sessions with people if people are interested in help with organic chemistry tutoring and coaching, um, as well as any type of advice they need for their chemistry class. So that is exciting stuff for the future. But today, I want to talk about a subject here. So mass spectroscopy, what is the difference between the parent M plus peak and the base peak? So these terms get thrown around when we start looking at mass spectroscopy. And this is going to be a shorter video, but I just wanted to clarify the difference here. So here is an example of a mass spec. And you can see this is for benzyl chloride. And the parent peak, or what's known as the M plus peak, is this one right here at 126. And then the base peak is here at 91. And the difference between these two is pretty easy to understand once you know the terminology and what's going on. But a lot of times people can get confused when they're first learning mass spec. So the M plus peak, known as the parent peak, is going to be the peak associated with the molar mass of the compound. All right. So this peak, you have to understand the way that mass spectroscopy works is that it takes your compound it puts it into an area where it's going to be bombarded with high level energy and you end up removing electrons from the compound and forming radicals. Now when you form these radicals you can also form cations and it is the cations that end up getting detected. So when we talk about M to Z or mass to charge ratio, when you form a cation usually you have plus one and so anything divided by one is itself so this means that m is just represented by or m over z is just represented by m which is the mass here all right so when we get ready to look at an organic compound we have removed an electron somewhere from the structure and we have created okay the cation once we've removed it's actually two electrons in order to do that because otherwise you just have another radical right but as we do that, we move, remove one electron, you've got plus, and then there's the other electron that's been removed, right? So for a total of two. So you have a cation. Sometimes it, it could really be associated anywhere with this compound, but that is the M plus, and that's going to be the structure itself, right? Because electrons are negligible when they contribute to mass, so that is the molar mass. Now what is the base peak? The base peak, which is the tallest peak that you're going to see, is sometimes it could be the M plus peak, but usually it's not going to be. Usually the base peak is going to be the result of the most stable cation that can be formed. So in the case of benzyl chloride, when we get a benzylic cation, so the removal of chlorine and you have the CH2 with the plus, this is incredibly stable because you have resonance positioning all over the ring here, right? So there's three other locations besides the CH2 that this plus charge can be delocalized over. And that makes it a very stable, I don't want to say it's a stable structure, but it's a stable intermediate when compared to a lot of the other intermediate cations. And because of that, it means that this fragment is going to be probably the most prevalent fragment because it's the most stable fragment and therefore the one with the highest probability of being produced. And so the base peak is really representative of your most stable cation, right? And that is going to be something where you're looking for resonance 
or hyperconjugation. So any type of tertiary cations are going to be ideal. Allylic cations would be ideal because of the resonance stabilized positions. So that is the result of the base peak. And the relative intensity, right, we say this is 100, the base peak, and everything else is in comparison to it uh, when we're looking at this. And that tells us about the relative stability of some of the other cations that we might find. All right, so that's a quick primer on the difference between the M plus or the parent peak, which is your molar mass, and the base peak. The base peak has nothing to do with the molar mass. The tallest peak simply has to do with the most stable cation that is likely going to form in the process of this fragmenting when you remove portions of the molecule. So hopefully this is helpful. Remember, you can always leave questions. If you have requests for future videos, go ahead and put that down because I will be happy to start trying to make some additional videos uh, as I'm getting ready to release these courses. Otherwise, I will post again soon and I will see everybody shortly.